Hey everybody, welcome back to day 14 of our 30 day EKG challenge and today we have an exciting uh, kind of second video in a series on atrial fibrillation. We're going to talk a little bit more about the variations in atrial fibrillation from a rate perspective and a little bit of a deeper dive into the physiology and perhaps some treatment options. So first thing I want to talk about is what's happening again in atrial fibrillation and why do we characterize AFib the way that we do. So normally we have nice P waves that arise from the sinus node in a normal sinus rhythm that depolarize in this coordinated fashion down through the atria. And that kind of loads the AV node with signal and the AV node then delays that signal by 120 to 200 milliseconds, sends that signal down through our Hisperkinji fibers to generate my QRS complex. And then the cycle resets again, we get repolarization of those two chambers and kind of reloads our heart. In AFib, what ends up happening is you get signal that is kind of in these micro reentry circuits all within the atria, causing a poorly coordinated depolarizing wave through the atria, and it happens over and over and over again. And the AV node that sits here is getting bombarded by these signals. So when the AV node decides to pass one of those signals down, so one of these signals finally bumps into it and it sends the signal down we're gonna get a normal QRS complex, right? There's our QRS complex. But after that happens, after the AV node sends that signal down, the AV node has to reset, right? It has to repolarize, right? It has to repolarize. And the amount of time it takes for that AV node to repolarize is gonna be really evidenced in the rate of our rhythm. So if it's repolarizing fast and it's conducting the next beat quite fast, we're gonna have rapidly conducting beats down into the ventricles over and over and over again as the AV node captures signals quite quickly. However, if the AV node is moving a little bit slowly, then we'll have a slow rate or a lower rate. And so we talk about this as the ventricular response. So this would be the ventricular response. So once we identify that we have atrial fibrillation, we need to talk about what is the ventricular response. And that's just the rate. So if the rate is less than 60 beats per minute, this is a slow ventricular response. Anything between 60 and 100 beats per minute is a normal ventricular response. And anything greater than 100 beats per minute is a rapid ventricular response. <clears throat> and remember that this is all a function of my AV node, which sits right here. It just depends on how the AV node is conducting those atrial fibrillatory waves. Remember that AFib is an irregularly irregular rhythm. It is irregularly irregular. This means that we cannot identify any pattern to the irregularity, but the beats are not occurring uh, in nice predictable pattern because remember the AV node is just getting bombarded by these signals as they are coming through the atria and the AV node is going to conduct them at a bit of a random uh, fashion. So let's take a look at this EKG now. As I scan through, first thing I do is I just kind of get an idea and I scan through the rhythm. I notice that it's very fast, right? Not hard to see that this is a very fast rhythm. If I look more closely, I notice that my QRS complexes are narrow. First thing I like to do is I determine that my QRS is narrow. And what does narrow QRS tell me? That tells me that we're getting rapid conduction through the ventricles, which conducts our, generates our QRS complex. And that rapid conduction occurs due to these specialized fibers that we call the Hisperkinji fibers, right? So anytime that the AV node sends signal down the bundle of his here, the right bundle, the left bundle, <coughs> excuse me, that is our Hisperkinji fibers, and that generates a rapid QRS complex that is less than 120 milliseconds in duration. So we have a narrow complex QRS that tells me that the rhythm is at least being, the QRS complex is being generated from a, a supraventricular origin. And I, and I decided to take a look at the rate, and I noticed a few things. I noticed that I have maybe an interval here that's a little bit longer than the next interval. And we're seeing some variation from beat to beat, right? Some of them are short, some of them are a little bit longer, just like this one. If I scan through, 
I see that seems to be the case, right? Here's some rapidly conducting RRs. Here's this one. And I look in front of all of my QRS complexes for any type of identifiable coordinated atrial activity, right? That would be a nice coordinated P wave, and I don't see any. So the fact that this is a irregular rhythm where we see we've got some longer RR intervals with some shorter RR intervals with no identical P wave activity in definitely a narrow complex rhythm, this tells me that this irregularly irregular rhythm is being generated from within the atria itself and that the AV node is conducting it um, in sort of a, um, a random fashion. And so this is atrial fibrillation. So now that we have atrial fibrillation, we need to determine what's the ventricular response. Is it a slow ventricular response? Is it a normal or rapid ventricular response? Remember that's a function of how the AV node conducts the signal. So you can't really look at one R to R interval and calculate the rate. Sometimes you have to calculate the rate over a period of time. And I know that this EKG strip that I'm using is 10 seconds long. So in a 10 second EKG strip, if I have a 10 second strip, I know that the number of beats here times six would give me 60 seconds. So essentially how many beats would happen in 60 seconds or a minute. So let's try to do that. And so what I can do is I would say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So we have 29 beats in this 10 second strip times six, and gosh, making me do math on the camera, 20 times six is 120, and six times nine is 54. I'm just gonna use my calculator, which is sitting right here, luckily. So we have 29 times six, which is 174. I think I would have had that right. 174 beats per minute. And that is really fast. So we certainly have a rapid ventricular response. So we would say that this is AFib with a rapid ventricular response. Now remember that the QRS morphology is determined independently of the rhythm. The rhythm is AFib with RVR, but we still have the opportunity to determine what happens. Remember that RVR is determined by this AV node here. It's still our job to identify how does conduction go within the ventricles, aka how does our QRS look? And so I can do things like evaluate my QRS axis. We already said that the QRS is narrow, but let's look at the axis. Our axis, we see that our QRS is upright in lead one, and it's upright in AVF. That tells me that my QRS is heading down to the left, which is a normal axis. I have a normal axis. You can see I have little septal R waves that grow and grow and become dominant in V4. So I have good R wave progression. You can evaluate for pathological Q waves, ST segment changes, which you don't see any here. And so what do we get? We get AFib with a rate of 176 beats per minute, which is a rapid ventricular response. So a few things to talk about with this rhythm. When we have AFib, let's talk about some treatment considerations. For AFib, we have rhythm Verse rate. So let's talk about rhythm. AFib is a rhythm that is characterized by these fibrillatory patterns within the atria. So our atria are usually depolarized in a nice wave. Remember, usually in a sinus rhythm, we get this nice wave of depolarization through the atria. And that allows for coordinated squeeze so that atria can send blood down into the ventricles, right? That's the whole point. Remember that our structure serves our function or functional serves our structure, however you want to say it. The physiology should support the anatomy. In AFib, though, all of these reentry pathways that we talk about, they don't allow for the atria to have a coordinated effort. So one thing is that sometimes this rhythm can cause hemodynamic, hemo, that was not right, hemodynamic consequences, right? So if the atria are quivering, we've got some hemodynamic consequences, meaning we might not be able to pump blood effectively. However, we also see other types of hemodynamic 
consequences where when the atria are quivering and the blood can't pump effectively, the blood becomes stagnant. So that blood can become kind of stagnant within this area. And especially if the blood becomes stagnant in the left atria, there's a risk that we can develop a clot. And if that clot gets dislodged and goes through the ventricles and then out to the rest of the body, we have a risk of stroke, right? So obviously in AFib, you have a risk of stroke, which is why we give these folks, depending on their risk of stroke, which you can calculate via Chad's VASC, all sorts of things, um, then we can put them on anticoagulation. Most notably, uh, we've got factor 10A inhibitors, we've got warfarin, which is a vitamin K antagonist. Um, there's all sorts of anticoagulants. Um, so that is a little bit about the rhythm control. And then also the last thing about rhythm control that I want to talk about is when you have AFib, that's chronically over time, if you have a long-standing AFib, that's sending these fibrillatory waves through the atria, they're suppressing the SA node. The SA node is being bombarded by these signals, and the SA node gets suppressed. So sometimes the SA node is suppressed for so long that the SA node forgets how to do its job. And so what can end up happening is when these people go out of AFib, they can have something called sick sinus syndrome. And it's really just SA node dysfunction. That SA node forgets how to pace. Remember, the SA node usually paces at a rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. And so when it gets overdriven by all of these fibrillatory waves that are just suppressing the SA node, if you go into a sinus rhythm, you can develop sinus node dysfunction. Just a few considerations there. And then the other thing would be rate. So if we wanted to um, focus on the rate, remember that we said that the rate here is a function of what? The rate is a function of how my AV node conducts those signals, those fibrillatory waves. So if the AV node is conducting them very fast, what do we get? We get a rapid ventricular response. And so if it's too fast, then we want to, we can say if it's too fast, then we want to block the AV node. If the rhythm is too slow, if we have a slow ventricular response, let's say the rhythm is too slow, well then we want to enhance the AV node. We talked a little bit about AV node blockade yesterday. Beta blockers, right, we block the adrenergic system. Calcium channel blockers because the AV node is so calcium channel dependent. But in a slow ventricular response, this is where things get interesting. Um, you can trial medications like atropine in the acute setting, which atropine is going to blunt the parasympathetic response, and so that will enhance this ratio of sympathetic to parasympathetic, and ideally enhance the AV nodal conduction of that signal. Uh, so these are just some ideas of um, rhythm versus rate control in atrial fibrillation. So what do I want you to get out of this? One, I want you to get out of this that AFib, um, the one, the physiology of it, how does the rate, how is the rate determined? How does the AV node implication in that? And then also, what are other consequences of this rhythm, right? Sinus node suppression of with chronic AFib. Um, we can have risk of stroke. We can have hemodynamic consequences, right? All sorts of things. And um, you just need to be able to assess your patient holistically, which is the idea behind the EKG lectures that I give you, is that I want you to use the EKG as a representation of the cardiac physiology in front of you. Because this is a snapshot in a window into what is happening in this individual's heart. And you need to be able to integrate that into your care. So I hope this helps. i um, really excited. We're going to do one more video on AFib next, and I'm super thrilled about it. Um, hope this helps. If you have any questions, throw them down into the comments. And if not, thanks for bearing with me as I'm a little bit sick and uh, a little nasally. And um, we'll see you tomorrow on the EKG uh, lectures. Take care.